When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now if we want to look at that scripture in context, to understand what it was that Paul was talking about, Paul was actually speaking about the transitions that we'll make from this age into the age that is to come. That's what Paul was speaking about. So if you read that scripture carefully, if you are a student of the Bible, you will find that 1 Corinthians 13 is actually the scripture that speaks about love and the priority of love in the life of a believer. So he says that prophecies, for instance, prophesying, will cease but love will endure forever he was saying that we we see in part we know in part but a time will come whereby that which we know in part we will now know in the fullness of what is revealed so what paul was actually speaking about there was our pilgrimage in this age when it comes to an end, we will enter into a reality in the age to come. It was on the basis of that that he says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood as a child. And what was the last one now? I thought as a child. I thought as a child. It was on the basis of that he was saying that, that in this realm, Man will not come into the full maturity of the things that are possible to him until we transit into the next age, which is the age where the kingdom of God will be visible upon the face of the earth. That is the context of that scripture. But as I waited upon the Lord on what I will share with you tonight, that was the scripture that the Lord gave to me in trying to show me that every Christian in your spiritual journey, you will go through transitions. There are spiritual transitions for your Christian pilgrimage. Your ability to understand those transitions, your ability to see what it is that God is communicating in those seasons of your life can be the difference between you becoming all that God wants to make you and you remain, remaining an immature Christian all your life. Our Christian life is defined by seasons. Our Christian life is defined by windows. Our Christian life is defined by cycles and circles. You need to be able to discern at every point in your life what it is that God is doing with you Otherwise, you will not be growing. Growth in itself is a transition. Spiritual growth is a transition. What happens to you when you are growing spiritually is you are transiting from one level of experience to another level of experience. What happens to you when you are growing spiritually is you are transiting from a level of understanding of the life of God to another level of understanding of the life of God. There are transitions. But what I find most of the time is the, the believer is not able to discern what season they are in their walk with God. So they are not able to put away the things that are associated with each season so that they are able to now function in the current seasons of their lives. Notice the progression that Paul gives to us here. First of all, he says, when I was a child, first of all, I spoke as a child. I spoke as a child. One of the ways to know if a Christian is actually growing and transiting in their growth in the spirit is to listen to the way the Christian talks. A Christian that is largely immature will have no control over the words that come out of their mouth. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. 
A Christian should know when to be silent. A Christian should know when to speak. And a Christian should know how to speak. A Christian should know what it is that must come out of your mouth. Whether it is even in prayer or whether it's in your relationship with other men. The measure of your growth in God can easily be discerned when we hear you talk. There are many who have been around God for a long time, but they still speak like children. For instance, there's a lot of talk happening in the Christian space. And people who are, who are making all this noise, they are making it on the basis of the fact that they think that they have revelation. For instance, for a child, the most important thing to a child is the love of God. For an adult, one who has grown in the ways of God, the most important thing to that child who has grown is responsibility. So when you hear people emphasizing things like a Christian does not need to confess their sin. The reason people are having those kind of conversations is largely what you have in the body of Christ is our babes. A bunch of people who have not matured in their, in their work with God. And they've come to such a point that even the words of Jesus no longer has any implication on their lives. The great one himself, Jesus, when he was teaching us what he calls the Lord's Prayer, he called it, the, we called it the Lord's Prayer. His disciples came to him and said, Master, teach us how to pray. In that prayer, he is the one that said to us to pray like this, forgive us our trespasses. Then a, someone is saying that a Christian, when he sins, he does not need to ask God for forgiveness. Or you hear somebody saying that Jesus has, has taken care of sin. That sin no longer exists. So when a believer does something that is against the laws of God, they don't call it sin. They call it a mistake. When you hear people talking like that, they are children. They've not matured. So what overwhelms them? Their obsession is the love of God. Forgetting that, the God who is a God of love is also a God of justice and righteousness and equity and judgment. And the reason they've remained like that is, listen brethren, there's nothing wrong with being a child. The only problem is when the child refuses to grow. Every season of your life has the appropriate diet. There's a season of your life where what we need to show you is the love of God. It is the when you are past that season of your life, you need to begin to know God in all of his fullness. And part of what you need to know about God is every child that he calls, he calls and he gives responsibility. You will be useless to God as a babe. And no matter how long you pray, if you don't make that transition from babyhood into maturity, God cannot entrust you with anything serious. It's not a matter of lying down to beg God. You must transit. Paul said, I was a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. I thought like a child. But when I matured, a transition happened. I put away childish things. A Christian needs to be able to transit from the old. A Christian needs to be able to transit from the familiar. How do you know that the current dealings in your life are still the current dealings of God? How are you sure that God has not moved from that place in your work with him? In Deuteronomy, if you read your Bible, the Bible says that God came to Moses. I think that's Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 6. He came to Moses and he said, you have dwelt on this mountain for too long. Where was the mountain he was speaking about? It was the mountain of the Lord. It was Mount Horeb. I don't know what happened to Israel after they left Egypt. They got to Mount Horeb, the mountain of the Lord, where there was fire, where the presence of God was real, where God was speaking to Moses like a radio. And all of a sudden, they became comfortable and they stayed there. In fact, Bible scholars will tell us that they spent at least one year 
at Mount Horeb. And meanwhile, when they were leaving Egypt, God said, I am taking you to the promised land. But they got to Mount Horeb and they stayed. Many of us have not made progress in our work with God because we have become too used to the thing that is familiar. So we are afraid to stretch ourselves and go beyond that childish level and step into maturity. I know you can pray, but have you moved beyond prayer to the place of intercession? Many in my generation don't know the way of intercession. If we check the things you have been praying for now, since January, this is November. Many of those things, though it looks as if it is, it is God that you are trying to please, many of those things in the end are to your advantage. So you are praying for the territory, hoping that if the territory becomes great, your life will also be prosperous. You are praying that the kingdom of God will come, hoping that as you pray, somehow your name will be associated to the revival. Do we know the way of intercession? I'm afraid, like I was telling them in a way yesterday, I'm afraid that many of us have mastered prayer to such a way that we have even become useless to God. That God cannot even stretch us beyond the place where we are. Can God tell you to go on a 60 day fast for a country that you do not even know exists as you are sitting there now? Can God call you to intercession for the person that is by your side? This is how the ancients lived. You go and read the story about Father Nash. They said, woe unto you if your name entered his prayer book. Woe. If Father Nash made up his mind, wanted to pray for you, you are finished. That was not a prayer warrior. That's a man who had mastered the art of intercession. He had grown in his prayer enterprise. He was now recognized as a prince in the spirit. And those things are the product of deliberate transitions. How long? This is the question that I kept hearing in my spirit on the flight. How long have you been at that mountain? How is it that you have become comfortable with something that was just supposed to be a resting place? They were just supposed to rest. And then continue their journey. They rested and they began to make it permanent. It took God coming to sound an alarm to drive them from Horeb. Get up and go. This is not the end of the journey. I know now you can have dreams and you can see things in the spirit. What next? What next? I know now that you attend the tent regularly. What next? Is that the end game that God wanted you to become a member of RCN and you attend RCN regularly? Then what next? What is the end game of your conversion, your salvation, and your fire? What is the end game? If by now you have been around these circles and you cannot stand up when somebody asks you, what does God want to do with your life? I, I dare say to you, you have not made a transition. If by now, you cannot wear your suffering as a badge of honor, I dare say to you, you have not made a transition. And at this point of your life, Satan still has a key to your depression, has a key to your joy, has a key to your prosperity. Satan still has a way that he knows he can manipulate you and cause you to become useless to God's agenda. If at this point, then you have not transited. You have been in a place where there is the opportunity to transit, but you've not made the decision because transitions in your spiritual journey are always the product of deliberate choice. You choose to move beyond childish things. For instance, dear brother, it's a child that continues to commit sin, a child. That's why the Bible says, if you sin willfully, eh? he did not say, if you sin by mistake, because once you have entered into salvation, every action of sin that you engage in is deliberate. 
So the last time you lied, you intentionally lied. The last time you masturbated, it was not because you were weak. You love, you love masturbation. You enjoy the pleasure of sin. And it's only babes that operate at that level. Men who have transited recognize that if the flesh does not die, the spirit will never be in control. 